Hi guys, teacher Maria here and today we're going to learn about Eastern watercolor. To understand it, listen to the story about the Chinese emperor and a painter. The Chinese emperor uh, wanted a picture of a rooster that would be the best picture in the world. And he heard that he had a very talented artist um, living in his country. So he went to that artist, traveled to his little house on a mountain, and um, asked the artist how long will it take for him to create the best picture of the rooster in the world. And the artist said, I will need a year and a lot of money and pay this money up front. And the emperor did that and waited for the whole year. When he came back, he saw an artist sitting in front of the house. There was a little bit of paper in front of him. And the emperor was so impatient. He said, where is my rooster? Show me my painting of the rooster. Why did you need a whole year? And the painter took a brush and in a few exact brush strokes painted the most amazing painting of a rooster you could imagine. And the emperor was happy uh, with the result, but he was very angry at the artist because he made him wait for so long. He said, how could you make me wait and take so much money if you could do it in two minutes? And the artist led him to his house. And the house was full by the roof of the paintings of roosters. He's been practicing over and over and over. So Eastern watercolor has to be exact. It's the moment. It's normally done in a very quick period of time, but it summarizes all the experience the artist have had in his or her life. Um, we will not paint the most amazing rooster today, but we will try different brush strokes and we'll feel more fluent with a brush. We'll understand what a brush can do. For this class, you're gonna need a stack of printer paper, uh, some reference, palette, watercolor, water, and paper towel with a brush. You need a brush with a pointy tip. And if you have too much water, you can always uh, wipe it off on paper towel. All right, let's start. Um, I'm mixing my paint. It's always a mixture of water and color. That's why it's cold this way. And you want to make sure that your tip of the brush is really pointy. You work with the very tip of the brush and you hold it as if you're sticking it into paper. So you can try making thick and thin lines varying the pressure of your brush. Ta-da! Try doing this. Try making the thickest stroke you can imagine, like this thick, and then gradually make it thinner, like that. Try making very, very thin lines and try making a grid out of them. Now let's put all this knowledge together and draw a koi fish. Again, prepare a mixture of water and color. You can use a plate for that. And I'll start with thin, thick, thin stroke. And then another thick, thin, thin stroke. And boom, 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 boom. Looks like a fish, right? Uh, but I will not add details at the moment because they will get blended. I want my first layer to dry out. You should also consider that. Oh, 
While I'm waiting for my fish to dry, I can paint the seaweed. And again, I will be uh, using the very tip of my brush for that. See, a line is actually a projection of the brush. So it doesn't matter how wide and long your brush is, as long as the tip of the brush can get really pointy. Please do not try to fix your line. The whole approach of Eastern watercolor is being precise. And once you put a line, you have to play it around. I'm touching my paper and yes, seems dry. So I'm ready to add scales now. For the scales, I'm using thicker mixture, more pigment. The more pigment you have in your mixture, the darker the lines will be. Make sure that your brush is pointy enough. So this approach is very minimalistic, right? If you mess up, it's okay. Do not try to fix it, finish your work and start over. There is no blue water, there is no reflection in water, just the symbols of the real life objects. This exercise will teach you brush work. You need to know how to use your brush and you need to focus when you draw your lines. So there is nothing like Eastern watercolor that will teach you that skill of concentration. If your brush is making fluffy lines, you need to add water. All right, it is your turn now. Next thing I'm going to paint is a sakura tree. And I want to practice these little strokes that will make flower petals. So I'm not um, moving my brush when I start making such strokes, but I kind of hover it over paper and softly land it. And that's how you make flowers. You should practice too before you start on your final piece. Now for the tree, we know a few things about trees. They grow from the ground, right? So they're only getting thinner on top. Make sure that your branch when you draw it gets thinner. And also they are not just straight lines, but they're kind of zigzagish. And let your brush make these lines. Don't try to copy the one uh, on the reference. It's not going to be the same. Just make it natural, but making some angles and letting it um, get thinner on top. And each next branch is thinner than the previous one next level of branches. You might need to change your water. If your water is full of color, uh, all your flowers will be gray. Mine is pretty light, but I will still change it. And time to paint the flowers. happens if you put two wet brush strokes together one runs into another it doesn't matter in this particular case but sometimes it can be very painful like you painted everything and then you add a black eye and this eye blends with the rest of your animal or creature you're painting so keep that in mind 
watercolor does it. Traditionally, Eastern watercolor is made on rice paper, but it's expensive and also printer's paper does a really good job. I think I'm done. Now you try it. I want to draw a little sparrow on a branch. Check your paper for marks. There may be marks from the previous uh, painting and go ahead. For one gray, I just add less pigment and more water to black. And sometimes you can use this watercolor ability to make blends and make some soft touches here and there. Well, you need wet watercolor layer for that. And what else am I going to draw today? I decided to draw a person. You better do it if you know how to draw people already. Um, and remember to plan ahead, deciding where the head will be, where shoulders and arms will be. and other parts of the body. Keep anatomy in mind. Go ahead and make your work now. You don't have to draw something this complicated. You can start from very basic things like koi fish and uh, blossom tree. But it's very important that you practice before you start painting and that you never try to fix uh, your mistakes, but just make more artworks. Thank you.